everyone, this is Vlad from Modulus Render and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about how to apply the Cove Lighting Technique for interiors in SketchUp and Enscape. Big shout out goes to File Under Pop, especially to Tommaso Antonicelli who's the architect and production manager who works there and I actually met him at three days of design in Copenhagen and uh, I really like their showroom. I'm not sponsored in any way, I just wanted to replicate uh the showroom they had especially this kitchen and as you can see here this is the actual photo from uh file under pop from their showroom and this is the enscape render that i did using the cove light technique and we're gonna jump into it um i'm gonna show you the the 3d model the lighting the materials and the render settings for this scene so you'll have a better understanding of how I achieve this inside of Enscape. This is the 3D model inside of SketchUp. Uh, as you can see, it's a small room building outside, so there's something to see outside the window. And I have some reference photos that I usually import inside my SketchUp window to look at them from time to time. These are really good, especially for materials, but also for the modeling part, so you can get everything uh, right, everything to scale, stuff like that. And you can see a lot of details in the reference photos that, you know, you might miss if you don't have them uh, close by. So. I modeled the room, I modeled the, the furniture, uh, pillows, little details like this. Uh, so we could have a very realistic replica of the showroom. And I also got some assets from, I usually get them from Dimensiva, from Polygon. I think these are from uh, Quixel Megascans. So a bunch of stuff brought in and then I, I uh, textured them and beveled everything of course bevel everything all the time if you can it gives it more realism and brings out the I mean it catches the light differently I know a lot of you wish that Enscape had uh, a fillet tool or a round bevel um, material option but it doesn't so we just have to bevel everything and then i added a bunch of um, scratches and dirt and fingerprints and smudges and stuff like that but we're going to talk more about that in the material section of this tutorial i just wanted to go through the 3d model so you can have a look let's talk a little bit about materials and lighting I think this is the most important part of any um, render, the, the material aspect and the lighting aspect. If you get these right, you can get away with not modeling everything uh, perfectly. So the um, technique that we're going to use to light our scene is called Cove Lighting or the Cove uh, Lighting Technique. And it's, I have some information here it's used in in film and cinematography by or most famously by uh, the cinematographer roger deakins and if you just put cove lighting cinematography or roger deakins you get this uh get these images that kind of explain what the cove is so in order to have a nice gradient of light over the the face of the of the actor roger deakins uses these coves let me see if we can get a bigger picture no anyway you have these coves of light or um it's basically a material uh, a muslin material and there are lights that bounce off of it so you see these lights over here that are very strong but they're not direct lights they're indirect lights that bounce off this 
um, material and onto the face of your subject. I try to uh, do the same for our interior and I kind of took this technique and applied it, of course, without uh, a subject that I wanted to light. I wanted to light everything in the room with this uh, soft gradient that uh, you'll see that brings out a lot of interesting shadows. I just wanted to show you the, the basic idea that uh, we're going to have. We're going to actually build the cove and have reflected light that will come into our scene. So as for the lighting, I have some exterior lights here and I place them differently than I usually do. I normally put them inside the, the room um, parallel to the window and then uh, they bring a lot of light inside. For this scene, I wanted to have some sunlight inside and to amplify that sunlight, I wanted to put these panels above the windows so the direction of the light is still uh, mimicking the sun. So I have the sun coming in and I have these lights that will bring more light from top to bottom um, following the direction that normally the sun has uh, coming into the uh, through the windows. And the cove, the cove light is very simple. So this is a very simple technique that anyone can use. And let me just turn on the tag here. These are the coves, which are basically, turn that off, white panels, just with 100% white material on them. now you can see it so it's it's a hundred percent white don't use a hundred percent white for any material in your scene but for this uh, cove light that will be out of frame it's it's no problem so i want these coves you can use one two three whatever uh, you would like and there's a spotlight that is directed from uh, this angle so we can have some bounce light filling the room so it would look something like this if i if this is my frame i just get them out of frame over there and i put more of them so we'll have a nice gradient and you'll see some nice shadows over here created by this so let let me just start uh, and escape turn these off all the additional lights and see what we get here we have the scene in Enscape, and as i said we have this sun coming in uh, which is really nice and bright so we have a little bit of an overexposure which is intentional i wanted to burn a little bit the the materials and have some uh, strong light come in because what normally happens here is that this light will bounce off uh, the walls and kind of give me a, a nice shadow over there and in order to amplify this effect inside of Enscape or to um, make the dynamic range of the image a little bit uh, bigger. Bigger? I don't know if it's bigger. Higher? Higher dynamic range? Yeah. So uh, let me just put the scene here and let's turn on the exterior lights that are over there. Now the changes will, will be very subtle and I hope you can see them. You'll definitely see them when you render, but let me just turn on exterior lights and with them you'll see a little bit more light coming in and especially over here we'll have this nice uh, gradient from top to bottom which you'll see kind of disappears without them 
So it's something like that. If I show you the reference photo, you see we have this nice gradient over here that is just amplified by these exterior lights. You can play around with different shapes and sizes of, of these lights, but the main idea would be to have them uh, oriented like this to amplify the sunlight in this case. And then let me just move a little bit here so we can have a better look. Let me just turn on the, the cove light. And you see how much more soft light is coming in exactly like it would uh, in, in a normal uh, photograph there would be a lot more bounced light inside of uh, of a room that's why I mean by by um, dynamic range so Enscape has uh, a lower dynamic range and in order to amplify that we bring in additional lights just like on a movie set or uh, uh, like a photo shoot where we use different lights to amplify or to enhance our scene and in this case, you can see, let me just turn them on and off. Like that, they're outside of the, the frame. And you see how dark it is without them. And then we have a much more um, soothing light. And we have this nice gradient here. As you can see, like the, the sunlight is bouncing and then it comes back then goes from light to dark over there. And then we have some nice reflections from the coves on the stainless uh, lights. So let me just turn them off and on. And you'll see this very, very soft shadow over here, which will be more visible in the render. So for the lighting, it's very simple, it's just this, and then we have the sunlight and the cove light. We have those exterior panels that amplify the sunlight, and we have the cove light that mimics or uh, enhances the, the light bounces inside of the, um, the scene. And the outside, I think, let me just check... I think I just put a plain white HDRI image. Yeah, white dome HDR. So it's just a white background. And that's it. We have the the, the ambient light from the white dome uh, from the, um, the sun. And then we amplify those with some extra lights. And the cove light gives us this really nice, or wraps everything in a, a sort of gradient, which looks really nice. And we can control the intensity by controlling the intensity of the, of the spotlight. Let me see here. The sun brightness is at 100%, which, again, I don't usually do, but I wanted this to be more, you know, sunny and a little bit overexposed in the bright areas. Let's talk a little bit about the materials. Let me just synchronize these and let's take a look. We have a lot of scratches, a lot of fingerprints, a lot of imperfections that I really like to use in every scene, even though they're very subtle. So here you'll see the difference between the... Oops the texture you see how how scuffed and scratched and damaged that is but on the model i mean in the render you barely barely see some of them and this is a nice uh thing i like to do and enscape has this cool option here so if i select my material Yeah. 
it's 4k so it's it's loading a little bit slowly but we have this image fade uh, slider that basically mixes my texture with the base color of it or any color I choose and then I can adjust how much of the scratches and the damage and the, the original texture is coming through. It would be great uh, for Enscape to include uh, two materials blending or a, a texture map inside of in, instead of just the color. Uh, but for now we have this, which is really nice because you can adjust the intensity of the fiber of the wood, of the um, uh, scratches or damages you have in the scene. So it's it's really cool. I'll just close that and we'll take a look around. So we have these materials that are uh, faded and then as you can see here everything is beveled and we have these scratches here again let me just turn on the material editor make them smaller so you can see maybe like this so i can move around and then for this material we have some normal maps and a roughness map and I usually add the imperfections to the albedo also because I want to see them and by fading the image I didn't fade it here but I can fade it so I can adjust how much of the scratches I can see so I usually do that in Photoshop and for this one I actually exported this uh, faucet into uh, Substance Painter and made some uh, more damage in there and brought it here and then let's see I didn't fade this so I didn't fade it because I think because of the reflections and because it's metal, you don't really see this much of them. But you can always fade it to make it look more clean. Like that. But because of the metalness or the metallic effect, that's 100% because of the reflections, you don't really see that much. And these have some scuffs and scratches. This was a nice thing. The, the stove over here has a lot of fingerprints because that's what happens in reality if you don't clean it. So. I have this texture and as you can see the diffuse has uh, a smudge map right fingerprints smudges and then I use the same diffuse for a little bit of bump 0.32 and then a reflection map with the same smudges so something like this which I inverted That's really nice. I really like that. Now for the lights, again, you see this smudge map, dirt map, grunge map, whatever you can find. You know, if it looks good, use it, see how it goes. So we have an image fade. Oh, so zero here so I just left this in the reflection channel and that's it so there's no diffuse information in this material just 100% metal and 
this scratch map. You have to be careful to, to map it appropriately. So use uh, through paint or what's the other one called? Sketch UV to, to map everything correctly so it doesn't look weird in the reflections. And now for the main event, the tiles. Why is this the main event? Because that's what Tommaso asked me. How do I do the tiles uh, in Enscape or in SketchUp? How do I work with tiling and how do I make them look good? So we have the floor tile and we have the tile on the wall here, which as you can see has a lot of interesting geometry from just one texture. And if I select it, you'll see we have a little bit of displacement going on on the walls and on the floor also. So we have the texture map, the displacement map, and the roughness map that has, again, a lot of imperfections that you can see, you can barely see in the reflections so here you see those little scratches and the tiling is a little bit off. I use this placement for that because it should resemble uh, like an old building and the tiles are not perfect. And the same thing happens here on the floor. We have this material and everything is a little, a little bit not perfect. That's how I like it. Let's see. So again, some displacement, like 0.9, it's not a lot. We have the albedo, the displacement map, and the roughness map. Now there are two options. Uh, or two ways I would do or I would work with tiles. I'm saying this because this is file under pop and they have a lot of tiles, floor tiles, wall tiles, so a lot of tiles going on in their showroom. And as you can see here, these are uh, textured or they have some uh, imperfections in them which is really cool. They look more handmade. So one of the options or the easy options that I would use uh, while designing and while preparing my scene is a plugin called Architectures. And Architectures is somewhere around here. This is the one. So Architectures is a really cool plugin uh, for, well, especially for architects where you can do your own tiles. So you have these pre-made materials, but then uh, you can choose new texture and then you can go for whatever kind of tile you need. And if you pay, I think it's like seven bucks or something, so it's not that expensive. Uh, if you pay more, you have access to these pro um, tiles so it's it's more and more and a lot of more uh, options and you can choose here I, I want to stack uh, columns numbers so maybe six by six and then the dimensions and you can have 200 by 200 you can have them like that. You can change the material. You can upload your own material in the pro version. Uh, you can add just the color or you can add some stone, granite, brick, and so on. So you have a lot of options. Let's do travertine like that. So it's really cool. And then you can tint the the texture you can give it a color you can have the grout 
in a lot of ways. So this is really cool. You can have a fillet, you can have it handmade, you can have a rough brick, standing seam. So these are the these edges in between the tiles, which is really cool. And then you have PBR options like displacement settings, uh, bump settings, roughness, and metallic or metalness. You can change the joints from mortar to something else. So you can play around with this and, and get really, really nice results. The, the only thing is that I would use the, the website to generate my materials because from here, uh, I don't know if I'm doing this wrong or uh, it's not, or if it's not clear, but from from the website or from the um, uh, the plugin from here, you you just hit import, and it imports the diffuse or the albedo map. But for the other maps, the bump, the hatch, displacement, normal roughness, if you have Pro, uh, it doesn't download them all at once. So. Uh, or it doesn't download them all at once inside of, of SketchUp because it, it can't. SketchUp just uses this uh, texture map. But in order to download all those other maps, I use uh, the website, log in, and then you make your, your uh, material, and then you download all of them. So you, you can click on each one and then download all of them and use them uh, inside of Enscape, you add the maps. So this would be one of the options that I would use to make uh, good looking tiles. And the other one is the one I used here actually, because I wanted this interesting, uh, you know, like handmade displacement look. And for that, I used Polygon and Polygon has these generators that are really cool. So you have texture generators. And I use the marble texture generator, but I uh, deleted the, the marble texture. I just wanted to generate the imperfections in the tiles. So I'll just open uh, this up and I'll show you how I did the material. So here we are in uh substance this is substance alchemist and you just create a marble tile floor with the polygon generator and you have all these options over here to to play around with as you can see here the the displacement effect that i was after the beveling effect so you have marble parameters uh, that you can change. You have color adjustments, gloss adjustments, layout. So you can have one tile size, two, three, and four. So you don't have as much tiling options as Architectures uh, has, but um, it's still good for rectangular um, pieces. It's really nice because apart from uh, the shape and size, dimensions and stuff like that. You have an edge fillet, you have angle variations, you have grout parameters, so you can make it bigger, smaller, uh, deeper. Um, there's a profile curve that you can use. But then you have these surface imperfections, which are really cool. You have noise, distortion, roughness, you have scratches that you can use and uh, you know, some pitting or some damage in the tiles. Uh, gloss imperfection. So in this case, if you want, you know, more of a handmade look for the, the tiles you are using, I would definitely use the, the marble tile generator from Polygon. Mm, again, I'm not being sponsored. This is just what I like to use. And... Uh, it's really cool. So you have these two options for uh, for the tiles. And I think I made the marble floor here also. And this one looks like this. It's more, a little bit more damaged than the first one. 
and you just export them as JPEGs and use them in your scene. And here you have all the roughness, bump, displacement, metal, ambient occlusion maps, everything you want to achieve this cool looking material. So if you want more damage, use this one. If you just want more tiling options and material options, then use architectures. Now that we have our model, we uh, set up our materials, our lighting, we can start rendering. So let's take a look at the render settings or the camera settings. So first of all, I, I don't use auto exposure. Uh, I never use auto exposure. I expose manually. So in this case, it's 55% field of view is, is 20 because I wanted to get this look like I was shooting with maybe a 35 millimeter lens and then some depth of field just 5% so it's it's barely visible but uh, I think you know any picture you take in reality uh, not everything is perfectly in focus like it is in a in a render so just a little bit of um, depth of field to give you that more natural uh, look and then I just choose my autofocus, my focal point with the slider, and basically that's it. For the image, again, I don't use auto exposure and I don't use auto con contrast. I just have them set to minus 50% in the highlights and zero, I mean minus 100 in the shadows because I will do this in post. So I, I need a very, uh, I don't need a strong contrast in, in my renders then saturation color temperature these stay the same motion blur not really i have a little bit of bloom and a little bit of chromatic aberrations the sun brightness 100 percent shadow sharpness zero and everything else stays the same just the white dome hdr uh, image in the sky box and huge resolution well because enscape is fast and i can go up in resolution because that gives me uh when i bring it down to i don't know hd or when i post images on instagram uh bringing them down or having more information or more resolution they just look sharper to me and uh i have a lot of room to kind of go in and and crop uh some parts that i really like and make other images from that so I, I usually go crazy with the resolution and that's it and these are the final renders that i did using this technique and as you can see uh the the imperfections are are very subtle and visible and they give the images a nice realism uh, you can see the displacement in the in the tiles over here that looks really cool and every image as you saw is uh, like 7k uh, resolution and because of enscape it all goes very fast very smoothly i use the same scene to um, create the animations the intro and the outro for the this tutorial and the images look really nice and crisp. So just subtle imperfections. And in post, I just added uh, some color corrections and a little bit of grain because I wanted some uh, photorealistic grain, like in this image here. You see, it's a little bit much if you zoom in, but like this. I like it. That's it for the Cove lighting technique in Enscape. I hope you found this information useful and it brought some value to you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. If you have uh, any input or any comments, just leave them below and we'll chat over there. Uh, if you would like me to cover certain subjects, just let me know and I'll see you in the next tutorial.